Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now this video is going to essentially be a continuation from last week. Last week we ended up looking at the system efficiency when we take a 2S battery pack and we plug it into a specific power system, we end up powering it at 100% throttle and then measuring all the parameters surrounding that. Then we take a 3S pack, we plug it into that exact same power system and we get the throttle position set so that it matches the same mechanical output. Then we compare the two different efficiencies. If you haven't seen that video from last week, I would highly suggest taking a look and watching that video. I will leave a link in the description below. Now this week, we're gonna take it a step further and what we're going to be looking at is the efficiency of our system as we go through 100% all the way down to a low percentage of throttle somewhere around that 20 to 30% range. Now the way we will do this is we will measure the efficiency of our system in increments of 10 all the way up from a low throttle setting to that 100% throttle. And because we are going to be using this battery pack right here, we are going to ramp all the way back down so that we're able to compare the efficiency all the way up and then all the way back down. Now the idea is that we are using a battery pack and voltage may influence our results. So this is what we're going Going to determine. Now I want you to leave your prediction below as to what you would expect happen as we go from a low throttle position to a high throttle position in terms of efficiency. I'm going to tell you that my prediction is that the voltage on the way up is going to be different than the voltage on the way down. We all know that. And I would not expect this to have a significant difference in the efficiency values that we will be measuring. It would almost essentially be negligible. And that's just because a small difference in voltage is not the primary factor that's influencing the efficiency here for us today. So let's go ahead, take a look at what our experiment is going to show us. First thing, we're gonna push the slider up so that we can fire up the motor and arrive at our first measurement to be taken, which is gonna be 1200 microseconds. We'll take a reading right at that 1200, move up to a 1300 and take yet another reading. We're gonna continue this pattern all the way until we get to the maximum throttle position. Every time I bring the mouse over here and take a sample, I am recording the exact values that you see on the left hand side under the sensors column. All those values get stored into an Excel spreadsheet where I am able to then construct charts as well as graphs using all of this data. We're going to ramp all the way up to maximum throttle and then we're going to take two data points and then we're going to start to ramp back down in throttle so that we're able to make a valid comparison between the voltage that we see as we go up versus the voltage that we see as we go back down in the ramping cycle. So here we are, we are now reaching our maximum. We're gonna go back and take yet another sample, and now we're gonna go and push back down through 1900, 1800, 1700, and so on. Now take note, all of the different parameters that we're measuring can be found there on the left side or in the real-time plots. And as you can see, we ramp down in this throttle setting and all the things that should make sense are making sense. We are producing less thrust as we ramp down. We're producing less torque. This is the mechanical torque that's actually being measured right at where the motor is located. And of course, we are also measuring the electronic speed of our motor. And that is based off of how many poles and how many electrical commutations are taking place per cycle. So now that we've reached our lowest value here of 1200, we will take our final measurement. So you can see how difficult it is to somehow land right at that perfect mark. And since we got all our measurements, we can just simply kill the motor. All right, here is the chart that represents the results that we ended up finding during the last couple minutes. Now the chart on the top represents the efficiencies that we've determined based on the run up. And the chart on the bottom represents the efficiencies as we ended up throttling the motor and power system down. Now, as we have predicted before the experiment, this chart comparison shows us that there's not that much of a difference when it comes to the actual efficiencies of our system versus the throttle position when that battery pack had more voltage versus when it had a lesser voltage because of the capacity that we've pulled out of that pack. 
Now simply put, it would have been a lot easier for me to operate this experiment or conduct this experiment using a power supply. However, I don't have a power supply that is capable of such a wide range of voltage as well as a relatively high amount of current. Because of this, that is exactly why I'm using a 2S battery pack. You wouldn't believe how many times I ended up charging these two battery packs just to make sure that we have some nice accurate data so that we can go and make the correct conclusions from this experiment. So with that being said, let's take a look at our results and see exactly what the graph shows us. So here's the graph of what we ended up coming up with. The relationship is very straightforward. Essentially, as you go from 100% throttle down to the lowest percentage of throttle, your efficiency is going to very quickly decrease. The closer you operate your entire power system, at 100% throttle, the better off your overall efficiency is going to be. Operating your power system at a lesser throttle percentage is going to contribute to lesser amounts of efficiency. So how can we take what we've learned and apply it out there in the real world? Well, essentially what we need to know is if you are after a certain mechanical wattage, let's say that you're flying an airplane, you're flying a helicopter or a drone, and you want to maintain some form of cruise speed. If your cruise speed is at 50 watts per motor, you want to make certain that that is at a relatively high percentage of throttle. If you end up making a change, such as increasing the KV and all else stays the same, or you end up increasing the cell count and all else stays the same, in order to achieve that same 50% mechanical output power, you're now going to have to reduce your throttle setting. And if you do that, as we've seen in the experiment today, you are going to see a lesser efficiency. If your overall goal is to maximize the amount of efficiency within your system, this is going to do the complete opposite for you. It's not because of the higher KV motor in this example, or it's not because of the higher cell count. It is simply a function of that speed control and the amount of throttle that you are providing as an input to it. Our speed controls have a lot of work to do as it's managing the throttle position. The duty cycle is the direct relationship of that efficiency value. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video. Now the next video that we put out on the channel is going to be very related to what we talked about today. It's gonna to deal with efficiency and have another element or layer involved. I don't wanna to talk too much about it because I do have to purchase components and then figure it all out to make it work so that I can provide you a video such as the one today. Now I hope you were able to learn something from this video when we're comparing the throttle percentage versus the amount of efficiency that we get out of our system. I certainly did, especially when it came down to the amount of low throttle range that we ended up looking at and the actual efficiency that we get out of our systems. I did not expect to see such a low efficiency come out from a low throttle percentage. That was actually quite surprising to me. As always, like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.